at the time uh, this thing started was when Pearl Harbor was bombed and we were supposed to be in church, but instead of a whole group of us used to hang out in this gas station that was very close to the church. And so we were, oh, we had a little gambling game that we were involved in at the time when an announcement came over the radio, of course, that time, that Pearl Harbor was bombed and hit by the Japanese. So the next day, immediately, all of us went down to Newark from where we were in Maplewood, New Jersey. We went down to, we went to Newark, which was about four or five miles away, all to the Marine office. We were going to join the Marines and fight those dirty Japs, as they were referred to in those days. Uh, the, the feelings, the sentiments as far as Japanese was that if you were Japanese, you were an enemy, which was a was not true, of course, but uh, that was the feeling that was per permeated during this period of time. Well, we went down there and they took our names and so on and so forth. And I was 16 years old at the time, but I told the Marine recruiters that I was 17. They said, well, 17 is fine. The only thing is you've got to get your parents' signature approval to go. I said, oh, approval, <laughs> <laughs> never happened, but okay. So sure enough, I had kind of doctored up my birth certificate to show 17, and I brought home the papers that they had to sign permitting me to go into the Marine Corps. Well, when I presented this to my mother, she said, Are you kidding? <laughs> you? No way! Well, I was very upset and everything else. And there was a couple of days later, uh, I think on a... Tuesday that I went back to school. I was in high school at the time. And sure enough, when I got into the classroom, they had a hanging up on the wall, a big blue star, which means that somebody was in service, usually a son or someone was in service. But in the classroom, my home room, it was me that they put up the blue star because the papers the next day on Monday said that I had joined the Marine Corps. The, I guess the recruiting office had given the newspapers uh, the names of all those who had came down to enlist, and they assumed that I had enlisted. So there I was, the blue star, and here I am sitting in class. Well, <laughs> I had turned 18 in November the 12th, and uh, shortly after that I had to sign up for the draft. And sure enough, you know, I was, my name was put on a list. But I was anxious to get in and get in there be even before I finished high school. So I joined and I think uh, I was signed up in March of 1943 and actually inducted in April of the following month. And at this point I was assigned, we went to Fort Dix, New Jersey, and from Fort Dix got on a troop train that took us six days, seven days to get to Florida. Well, that was very typical in these trades at that time were the old steam engines burning coal. But when we finally got there, we were all we all looked like coal. <laughs> there was no accommodations as uh, seats. We just sat there and had all the and it was as we went further south it got hotter and so we'd open the windows and all this black smoke from the <laughs> engine would come into us. Well anyway. <laughs> It was not the ideal train ride that you would normally associate with travel, but anyway, we did get there, and where, where was I assigned? We didn't know this, because everything was a military secret. You wind up in Miami Beach, Florida, do my <laughs> basic training. <laughs> Army Air Corps. Now, we used to have 12 guys per one of these little villas that just had a main bedroom, a living room, and double bunks. So <laughs> our six weeks of basic training were there in Miami Beach, which everybody said, hey, fantastic. But if you try to march in the sand, you get a different view of understanding of how easy it is. <laughs> <laughs> but from there on, uh, after our six weeks, it was off to uh, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And uh, that was to radio school. And from there to gunnery school until a assignment.